welcome to the second episode of Paint with a Pint. I am your instructor, Janet Hoffman, and today we're going to be painting this awesome mountain landscape based on one of my favorite places in the Pacific Northwest, Saddle Mountain. To begin, please make sure that you've checked out the materials list in the description for this video below. To review those quickly, you will need a 16 by 20 pre-prepped canvas or whatever standard size of your choice. You will need a palette of paint with the following colors, white, red, yellow, purple, blue, and black for today's episode. You will need four different size brushes from a one inch to a three quarters, half inch and a quarter inch brush. I will be letting you know what size to use and when. You will need a cup or a jar for rinsing out those, those brushes in between steps, a paper towel for drying them off, for today's episode, you will also need a pencil and possibly paper that is optional and an apron to protect your clothes or wear something that you don't mind getting paint on. And going along with our paint with the pint theme, a pint of your favorite beverage. Use this beverage as a reminder that this whole process is meant to be fun, relaxing, enjoyable. So every time that you, use, uh, that you take a sip of your favorite beverage, allow yourself to just relax, stay calm, cool, collected, and enjoy the process of painting. So let's paint with a pint. To begin our painting today, we're not going to be starting with brushes and a palette. Instead, we're going to be starting with a pencil and optional, a stencil or paper. I want to let you know that before we begin, you don't necessarily have to paint specifically Saddle Mountain. You can look up a picture on your computer or on your phone of a mountain that's around where you live and make it personal and make it your own. So just know that this is totally customizable and you can make it really however you'd like. I am going to be using a stencil of Saddle Mountain that I have already created. So I'm going to take that, that stencil, I'm going to place my hand at the top of my canvas, and I'm going to take that stencil and place it right below my hand or where my thumb hits that stencil. Then I'm going to take my pencil and I'm just going to lightly trace out the top of Saddle Mountain. And I'm also going to use this stencil to draw out the bottom of the mountains. So I've just taken care of the first line in my painting and the second line. And you notice there's two more to go. So with those, I'm just going to freehand sketch those out. So I'm going to um, start about, we'll go four fingers. I'm going to do... Actually, let's do three. Three fingers, make a line, and then let's do two. Okay, so from there, I can just make a wavy line that goes across, and then I want another one that kind of maybe comes out and dips and goes across the other way, and then I'm also going to divide this one up. Okay, so with those few lines in my painting, I've already sketched out um, where I want the mountains to go and how I'm going to be using this atmospheric perspective. Atmospheric perspective in a painting is really just realizing or noticing that the sky, starting with the sky being the lightest and working your way down to the foreground, which will be the darkest, um, and there's a gradual um, change in between those values, value just being the, the difference between light and dark of a color. The lightness or darkness of a color is value. It's an element of art that we use. So just keep in mind that as we work our way down, the color is going to be getting darker and darker. So I'm going to start with the sky. I'm going to take my largest brush. I'm going to pull aside a little bit of white a little bit of red because I'm trying to mix up a nice shade of pink but I'm also going to add a little bit of yellow because I, um, for my sky I want kind of like a peach sky or a peach um, background so just mixing in a little bit of that yellow 
Okay, and once you get a color that you're pretty happy with, and by the way, I'd like to point out that I do have a second version of the same painting that I'll be giving you other options for colors, but I'm going with this kind of like light pink peach color for today. So once I um, have a little bit of that color on there, I'm just going to start to paint side to side. Make sure that you remember to paint the sides of your canvas as well and the top. It just adds a really nice touch if you don't have a frame and you want to hang it on the wall whenever you're done. Um, it's ready to go. So painting the sides I always suggest because it's, it's just a nice feature if you don't have a frame ready to go at home but you want to get it up on display right away. So again, I'm just letting these colors really just kind of blend together. I've got kind of that sunset color going on with the um, pink, the yellow. Just kind of letting that all blend together as it would like. a chance to paint the top part of the painting which is the sky right above the mountains I put my large one inch brush into my jar so that it can rinse out I won't need it at least right now I'm going to switch down to my three quarters inch brush and I'm going to be mixing kind of like a light bluish purple or light bluish violet so you can make this however blue you would like, or if you want it to be more purple, that shade is up to you. So I'm going to pull aside just a little bit of blue, a little bit of purple onto a space on my palette, mix a little bit of white along with it. I can even add a little bit of red to warm it up a bit. Okay, and then once you get a color that you're happy with, you can go ahead and just start painting that color right where the shape of your mountains will go. You want to make sure that the sky is dry before you do this step or else the, um, the yellow and the pink and the purple and blue is just not going to blend together very nice. So make sure that that's dry before you do this step and I'm going to outline the bottom there. Make sure you include the sides. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give you some time to just take your time, fill in that top portion of the mountain, the lightest part of our painting, and um, once we get that all done and it dries, we'll start on the next step. Now that I have filled in the first section of mountains, the mountains that are furthest away in the painting, I'm going to work on the second section. I'm going to use the same exact brush. I'm not rinsing it out. All I'm doing is creating a color that is a value darker than what I started with. So I can start with my purple blue again and still add white to it. It's just this time I'm not going to use as much white. Okay. 
you can test it out on your canvas once you come up with something that you are about happy with. I'm going to add a little bit of white to that. So play around with different colors. Um, find a color that you are happy with. As long as it is darker than the color that you were just using, then you should be in good shape. I think I'm actually going to go a little bit lighter than that. And you want to overlap each section. So just like I overlapped this first section of mountains over the sky a little bit, I'm overlapping this color on top of the color that I just did. So you're overlapping because you don't want any gaps in between. Don't forget about your sides. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and allow you some time to get this section filled in. Okay, we have our third section of our painting complete. This uh, fourth section right here, right below our final foreground section, um, I'm going to paint the same color as this, but just a few shades darker. So to do that, again, I'm using blue and violet. And I'm also adding in a little bit of red to that. It's giving it kind of more of like a plum color. And if that's not dark enough, start to add just a wee little, little, little bit of black to it. You don't want to use too much black though because it will go, a little bit goes a long way. As long as it's a little bit darker than the shade above what you were using or the value above what you were using, then you should be in good shape. So I can already see by testing this out that the color I have mixed up is a little bit darker than the one above it. So I'm going to give you some time to go ahead and paint that section out. And when we're done, we'll start on the last section and then it will be time for Happy Trees. Now it's time for the foreground. So this is going to be the darkest value that you paint because this is the foreground. So whatever color you were using um, last, you're gonna go just a shade darker. So to do that, like I've been using blue, violet, red, I'm going to mix just a little bit more black into that. Again, a little bit of black goes a long way. Test it out, make sure that it's darker. If it's not, then add a little bit more black. Okay, now that I've mixed up that darkest value, I'm going to give you some time to get that completely filled in. Don't forget the sides, don't forget the bottom. You can flip it upside down to paint the bottom of the canvas. And you wanna make sure that all layers are completely dry because our Next and final step is going to be painting our trees. mountains completely painted it is time for our final step painting happy little trees so I have two brushes left that I have not used my half inch and my quarter inch and the only color of paint that I need is black 
So I'm going to start with my half inch brush. I'm going to be painting three trees on the left hand side, two on the far right, and then a couple down here on the rightish side. So starting with my one inch brush, I'm just going to dip that into my black paint and I'm going to start by drawing lines um, from the bottom to the top. So about two inches, two fingers worth from the side. I'm going to start at the bottom and just draw a line up. I'll go about an inch beside that, draw another line, maybe a little bit shorter this time, and a third, maybe just a little bit shorter than that. And then I'm going to do that exact same thing on the other side, only this time I'm going to do two trees. And then I'll space it out about four fingers and I'll do two little ones right in here. Okay, then I'm going to switch back to my quarter inch brush and starting with the branches at the very top, you do not need a whole lot of paint on your brush when you do this step. So I'm gonna dip it into the black and then tap some of that off onto the side of my palette and I'm just going to ever so lightly, starting um, with your brush vertically, um, I'm going to tap a little bit and then start to angle your brush at a 45 de degree angle and bring that ever so slowly down. And I'm just tapping ever so lightly. Again, I do not have a whole lot of paint on my brush. I can add more layers as I go, but right now I'm just kind of painting the skeleton of the painting, or the tree, if you will. And I'm going back and forth. So I'm doing one side, and then kind of filling it in, and then bouncing to the other side, and just working my way down. As you do the top of the trees, you definitely want to use your quarter inch brush, but as you move towards the bottom of the trees, it's perfectly okay to um, switch back and forth in between your quarter inch and your half inch because obviously the branches are going to get a little bit thicker and a little bit bigger at the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give you some time to fill these in. painted all of your happy little trees, your painting is complete. Thank you so much for spending this time with me today. If you liked anything about this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of Paint with a Pint.